Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today is Tuesday which means that it is time for another scrapbooking tutorial video and today we are going to be working inside of the Silhouette software which is used by the Silhouette cutting machines to make cut files. Uh, if you are new here to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Crystal. I am super excited that you are here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you can see all of my future tutorial and crafty videos. And then we'll go ahead and get into today's content. So this month, April of 2020, I have been working on uh, putting out some tutorials about digital stamps. So we talked about the difference between brush files and uh, ABR or uh, PNG files. And then uh, we talked last week about different ways that we could use our stamps to create scrapbooking products. And today is going to be the last for now tutorial with the theme of digital stamps. So I am going to be showing you how to create a cut file within the Silhouette software using digital stamps. I here at home, I have a Silhouette and that's just the program that I use, the cutting machine that I use. I'm sure you can do the same thing on the Cricut software or the Cricut machine. I don't really know anything about that. So if that is what you are interested in, I would suggest doing a Google search or a YouTube search and see if there's a tutorial out that is specifically geared for the Cricut. But if you are a Silhouette user like me, you know, keep watching and I will show you how I turn digital stamps into cut files. So let's start with the basics. How do we open our stamp files in the Silhouette software? So this first part is going to be pretty easy. Basically, all we're going to do is go up to file open and then we're going to open up um, one of the files that houses all of the digital stamps in it and open up any digital PNG stamp file. So this one is the friends stamp from the Ali Edwards friends story kit. Then I'm going to go in here and open up another one from a feed your craft digital kit. I believe it is the at home digital kit and I want to just pull open this tiny little house. So once I have these files open in here, I guess one thing to mention also is whenever you're opening multiple PNG files, each one will open as a separate document. You can go ahead and like select it, copy it, and paste it onto a different page if you want to have more than one stamp set or more than one cut file on a page. But when you are opening it straight from the files, they will open as separate documents. So then when I have the image selected, I can go ahead and click on one of the corner boxes to uh, expand or or to to resize my image. So to either enlarge it or reduce the size. For this one right here, I am going to enlarge it up to a up to six inches wide. So that way I can put it on a scrapbooking page that is a six by eight pocket page. Then I'm going to go over to this little house stamp that when I load it in here is like an inch and a half big. And I'm going to go ahead and enlarge that one up to like four and a half by four and a half inches, something in there wide. Uh, which is the same tall because it is just a square and this I'm going to use as a uh, like a mini a mini album I'm essentially going to make with this so if you are making a cut file where you want the front and the back of the cut file to have the design elements on it you may need to uh, change the orientation of your image and we can do that right here in this program before creating our cut file so to do this you will just need to select the image that you want to change the orientation of then we're going to go up to the top menu and select object and then mirror and then you can either select mirror horizontally or mirror vertically if you collect click on horizontally it's going to flip it side to side just like that just like the image right now. If we go up and do it again and we select mirror vertically, it's going to flip it upside down. So just depending on the orientation that you want for your cut file, you can use those those alterations right there in order to get it specifically how you want it to be. So next let's talk about tracing our stamps. 
now that we have them positioned the way that we want them. So to get our stamps traced, which is the first step in making them into a cup file, we will want to go to the right hand sidebar menu and we're going to click on the icon that looks like a butterfly. Then we can select this select trace area button right here and then we can go back over to our canvas and we're just going to draw a box around the image that we want to trace. So in this case, I'm going to put a box all the way around the word friends. Once I do that, it's going to, to light up yellow and everything that the yellow touches is what it's going to trace. So if I select the trace button in the tracing menu, it is going to trace every line in that in that file. So it's going to get the inside and the outside portions of this stamp. I can go ahead and trace this area again, the same word, and this time I'm going to select trace outer edge. And what that is going to do is only trace the outer edge of the image that I have selected. So depending on um, what types of files you want to cut, you know, you might want to trace the entire area or sometimes you might want to trace just the outer edge. So now let's go over to the house stamp and we're gonna do the same thing with that one. So I'm gonna get started again by selecting my trace area right here and then I'm gonna hit the trace button because when I print this file out, I actually want all of the sections available to me so that I can use them to create the details of the house. However, when I trace the second one down here, I'm only gonna trace the outer edge and that's because uh, I know that I want a section of this file to act as the backside, right? So if I if I put papers behind that first file, it's going to be a hodgepodge of papers on the other side of this house. So then if I cut out one solid full background, I can go ahead and glue that on and then it will have a finished look on the back. So then I am going to do another one of those files with all of the bits and pieces um, traced so I can show you how to edit your traced stamp. So what do you do if there are sections that you don't want but you don't only want the outer edge? So here's something that you can do. If you click on the image that you want to edit or adjust, then you can go up to the object menu and click on release compound path. What that's going to do is it's going to break apart all of the different sections within this file. So then you can click on the individual areas inside of the cut file and and delete them out or move them if you want in order to you know make cut files for different parts. So I'm just going to show you here how I can delete out like these windows and then I'll delete out the door and then once I've got it the way that I want it I will put this house and all the pieces I have remaining back into being one file. So to do that what you're going to do is select all of the area or all of the pieces that you want to become one file again then we're going to go up to the object menu go and go down to make compound path. So then what this will do is it will force all of those bits and pieces back into the one file or the one section that you can move around as a whole. Prior to doing this, if we would have clicked on any one section, it would only move that section of the file, not the thing in its entirety. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and then I'm going to select the out the outer edge file. I want to copy it and paste it so I can actually print out two of those because I want to use one for my back cover as well, which will make a lot more sense uh, when you guys see the pictures later. So now that I have this all situated, it is ready to be sent over to my silhouette to be cut. Now before we cut out those two files, I first want to show you one more example of a stamp set that has a couple of imperfections in it that um, 
if I were, and I will actually cut this one out too, but when I create this as a cut file, I need to do a couple of adjustments so that my, um, so that my silhouette won't mess up some of those really intricate lines. So I'm going to go ahead and select the trace area and trace it. I'm going to delete off the stamp itself and then we're going to zoom in really close on these letters so you'll see that almost all of the letters are fine and full there like is a little bit of a jaggedness to them because that's just how it designed how it is designed but then when you look at the letter n you can see that there are like three bubbles inside of that letter so i'm going to click on the stamp and select release compound path so that way I can select all the little itty bitty bits. And then I'm gonna go and select each of those bubbles and I'm going to delete them off of this file. So now that N is complete and solid just like the rest of the letters. And when I print it out, it won't have any funkiness to it. Or when I cut it out, it won't have any funkiness to it. So then I'm just gonna select the whole thing again and click on make compound path and that's just going to put the whole thing back together so then i uh, don't want to print this one <laughs> quite that big so i'm going to go ahead and adjust the size here so before i showed you you could adjust the size when it was the stamp but you can also adjust the size when it is the cut file or the traced area as well so then i am going to copy this <clears throat> and paste it onto the same page as my friend's word. That way it can all be cut out at the same time. Um, and I only have, you know, the two files to cut. And then now we're ready to send these over to the silhouette. So let me show you guys, uh, it's super simple, how to get these sent over to your silhouette to be cut. Once you have everything positioned and edited the way that you want it to, to cut out, all you have to do is go up to the upper right hand corner and click on that send button. What this is gonna do is pull up a really bold red outline for every cut that your machine is going to make. So here I can see exactly how the front of that house is going to look and also that the two back pieces um, are being cut as well. So all of these are gonna be cut out of the same paper or whatever papers I put on uh, using those patterns. Now I will do the same thing for the friends stamp and that's going to show you, you know, it just gives you a last look to make sure that everything looks good before you actually hit the send to cut button. So then you can hit that button and your silhouette will do its job and then your digital stamps are officially turned into cut files. So you can save these as cut files, you don't have to. But if you want to come back to them again at another point in time, you could save them or just, you know, exit out of them. So that is going to complete this tutorial for uh, turning your stamps into cut files. I do want to mention that when you are cutting these files using your Silhouette or Cricut or, you know, whatever cutting machine, you are not limited to only use paper either. So this is a really awesome way to use like patterned paper but also to use different textures like vellum or uh, you could do acetate or you could do fabric or felt or there's like there are so many different different ways that you can use cut files to create different textures for your scrapbooking like it's so cool Anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful to you and that this series uh, of videos about digital stamps has been helpful for you and maybe uh, demystified like how to use them for your own memory keeping projects. Um, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything that I did. I will be more than happy to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And also let me know what kinds of tutorials you guys would like to see for next month. I have a couple of ideas in the works, um, but I'm always open to suggestions because ultimately I am making these videos to help you guys, I guess and myself, uh, to learn some more techniques that we can do in our memory keeping. So let me know if there are any specific tutorials you would like to see. Um, and then that's going to do it for us. So until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will catch you in the next video.
Bye now.